G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. Uh, as an American, I've gotten some unusual and to be honest, sometimes frankly rude questions from Aussies living over here. And one topic that some Aussies like to bring up just to kind of stir the pot a little bit are nuclear weapons. Because as history has shown, America is the only country who's actually used a nuclear bomb. And for some reason, Aussies love to bring that up. Right along with like guns and healthcare, for some reason, nuclear weapons is something that Aussies just love to poke fun at Americans for. So over on Discord, somebody over there had sent this video, nuclear bomb testing at Maralinga from the channel Behind the News. So let's see what this is all about. If they do some sort of nuclear testing in the outback. I've never heard of this. I'm curious. This is going to be a little bit different. So grab a Becky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Outback Australia isn't exactly the busiest place. But around 70 years ago, there were some big things happening out here. And I mean, big. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. Back in the 1950s and 60s, there were some massive nuclear tests out there. Did you guys know this? I've never heard of this. I've lived here for two years and you never really hear about, like when I lived in the States, you never really hear about other countries testing nuclear bombs for the most part, or at least historically. You kind of hear it a little bit now, like what's going on in the modern day, but you never hear about what's happening in the 50s and 60s in other countries. So let me know down below, is this common knowledge for Aussies? Because I did not know any of this. See, after World War II in 1945, when the first nuclear weapons were dropped over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the world was showing the true power of nuclear, everyone wanted a slice of the atomic pie. And so started the atomic era. Oh, wow, okay. Um, that house is in shambles now and um, Like you never see a ton of videos. You always see the videos of the mushroom cloud, but seeing those kinds of videos just really put into perspective how powerful those weapons are. Okay, anyway, I, I just wanted to pause and stop that for a second because, wow. Britain was one of those nuclear hungry countries and their government needed some wide open spaces to develop their weapons. I wonder where has that? Bingo, Australia. So, in 1950, the British PM, Clement Attlee, went to Aussie PM Robert Menzies and said, Hello, old chap, would you mind if we blow up some things in your desert? You know, for science. To which Menzies, who wanted to maintain a good relationship, said, Ah, sure, go ahead. Britain conducted its first three tests in the Montebello Islands and Emu Field in 1952 and 1953, before moving to Maralinga in South Australia, which from 1956 became the home of seven more major tests during Operation Buffalo and Operation Antler, and up to 600 smaller tests. These tests happened right up until 1963, when you- That's over 10 years of testing, I mean, Obviously, you need to test these kind of weapons and you can look at it with, what, 60 years of hindsight now? What in the world was that doing to the environment nearby? I know the outback's pretty open, but what was that doing to wildlife out there? That stuff travels. What was it doing in the air around those areas? Like, just there's so many questions. Like, it just kind of hurts a little bit to see the outback being used for that. It's, it hurts. It's so unique. There's nothing else like it in the world and they're testing nuclear bombs in those places. The attentions around the world hit boiling point following the Cuban Missile Crisis. World leaders came together to sign the Partial Test Ban Treaty, which banned the testing of nuclear weapons underwater, in the atmosphere or outer space, as well as pledging to work towards an end to the nuclear arms race, welcoming a new era of world peace. But while the tests ended, that wasn't the end of the Maralinga story. In fact, it's still going today. And to understand why, we need to get a little scientific. There's still nuclear testing going on in South Australia? You've got to be kidding. These are nuclear weapons, like the ones tested at Maralinga. They contain radioactive elements like uranium-235 and plutonium-239. And when you split or mash the atoms of these elements together, they release a lot of energy. And if you do that just right, it equals a big bang. 
like really big. Some of the bombs tested in Maralinga caused mushroom clouds that reached more than 14 k's into the sky. But in those clouds were a whole lot of radioactive particles, and winds blew those particles everywhere, even as far as Townsville. The Maralinga site and surrounding area was blanketed with dangerous radioactive material. Then why is it still active today? I want to know, like, uh, drives me nuts with somebody's reaction video, like, to the point now, is it still being used today? Are they still dropping bombs there today? Because I can't see how that would be legal. Uh, history can be so frustrating because you're looking back at it in hindsight and just think how dangerous and how deadly it is and how much it's hurting the environment. And, uh, too much radiation can cause major health problems, including deadly diseases like cancer. But it was out in the middle of nowhere. What harm could it do? Well, a lot, actually. There were around 16,000 on-site workers and many indigenous people in communities around the site, all of whom were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. In 1967, British authorities tried to clean it all up, but in 1984, Australian scientists found they hadn't done a very good job, and major radioactive contamination was still there. The following year, the Aussie government launched a royal commission into the tests, and it found that very little effort was put into protection and monitoring radiation levels. I mean, are you really surprised? Like really, it's the 60s, and I can't imagine that there would have been much funding for this, even if it was the British government that wanted to do these tests. Are you really surprised that they didn't do a great job of cleaning it up? Are you really shocked by that? Traditional owners were also not asked for permission to use the land, and many Aboriginal people weren't warned of the danger or removed from the area, leaving them exposed to radioactive fallout, which... You mean to tell me the Australian government didn't care about the Aboriginal people living out in that area? Shocker! They called the Black Mist. It led to another massive cleanup effort, costing around $101 million and $13.5 million in compensation for the indigenous people of Maralinga. All of that didn't stop the long-term effects, though. Veterans and indigenous people of the area suffer higher cancer rates than the rest of the population, and many have ended up getting really sick and dying. 2012 and 2013 saw huge class action lawsuits spearheaded by British and Aussie veterans against their governments, saying their human rights were violated. I love this country, I serve this country, and now I feel I've been abandoned by the country. There's no doubt in my mind that the scientists working on the experiments knew the risks to us, but they chose not to tell us the truth. Again, I can't imagine anybody's actually surprised by this, and I'm wondering how much money, if this was for the British government, and the British government made this agreement to do this, how much money did the British government actually give Australia in the cleanup effort? Seriously, I kind of want to know that, because if all of this was because the British wanted to test in the outback, then the British should have to compensate for cleaning up in the outback and for all of the damages and punitive damages and whatnot in this case was shut down though, as the UK Supreme Court ruled that too much time had passed for them to prove that their illnesses were caused by the testing. In 2017, the Australian government agreed to provide better health care for both veterans and indigenous people of Maralinga. And today, most of the site has been cleaned to a standard safe enough for people to go visit. But some areas still contaminated with plutonium-239 won't be habitable for more than 24,000 years. So while the Maralinga nuclear tests disappear into the pages of history, their effects will live on long into the future. Aw, oh, that just makes your skin crawl, doesn't it, thinking about that? All of that land, all of that space, and it's not going to be livable. It's not going to be usable for, what did you say, 24,000 years? Like, doesn't that just make you a little bit angry that they did that to the Outback? But hindsight with these videos can be rough sometimes because it just makes you so angry that they didn't see it or they couldn't see it. So definitely learned stuff like this video. Had no idea that there was nuclear bomb testing ever done in Australia. And it breaks my heart to see that it damaged parts of the outback that badly. And that there are so many people who are affected by this. 
not surprisingly, cancer rates skyrocketed in those areas, and it's just so tough to see that the after effects are still there. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really, really do appreciate the support, and I will see you all in my next video.